Hey guys, I've received a ton of questions on how I do my uh, weathering on my vehicles, such as the undercarriage of the 55 Chevy, as well as the salt weathering like the body of the 55 Chevy. Um, this is going to be a real quick down and dirty video on how to do the salt weathering and how I do some of my weathering on my, uh, on my undercarriage. Um, there are literally hundreds of videos on doing salt weathering on YouTube, so this is not going to be a very uh, labored video. It's going to be fast, quick, and uh, you'll understand exactly how to do it. There's nothing to it at all. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is prepare your body for painting and then start painting. All I'm going to use uh, for this effect is XF64, which is a red brown from Tamiya. Um, it looks good for a rust because it's a nice flat color and then just paint the body like you would any other model you're working on. So I'm going to go ahead and finish painting the body and I will be back to show you the next step. Okay, so now that the paint is dry, it's as simple as taking a paintbrush with water. There's my salt right there. You can see here I've actually dumped the orange salt from the uh, 55 back into the container to use again. So just add water wherever you want to be able to see the undercoat, if it's rust, if it's whatever you're doing. You can use this on tanks, you can use this on cars, do whatever you want. So go like that, take your salt, put your salt on the body, dump off any excess salt and you end up with something that looks like that. Mmm, donuts. So now that I have my salt on the body and I'm ready to paint the top coat, I chose a nice tester's bright yellow so that we'll be able to see the big contrast between the undercoat, which is the rust, and the color that I'm putting on now. So now you just simply paint the body like you would. Don't worry about salt blowing off. It's going to blow off. That's okay. It just adds to the uh, adds to the detail. If you don't want a lot of the salt to blow off, just add more water to the body. So I'm going to finish painting this, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so while we're waiting for the paint to dry on the salt weathering sample, uh, let's talk a little bit about how I do some of my undercarriage and suspension weathering. Um, so you'll see that this frame has got holes, or the body, I guess, that would be the floor, not the frame, has got holes all through it, and um, it looks weathered, aged, and get it to focus in here for you. There you go. So you can see that it's weathered and aged and uh, it looks like it's been around for a little while. So how do I get the holes in there? Pretty simple. So all you do is you grind from the inside so you can see the grind marks. To do that, I use my Dremel. So if I can get back far enough, you see my Dremel there on the table with the long wand. So this just simply comes off of its hook and I can use my Dremel with the grinder or whatever attachment I happen to put on it. And that will allow me to uh, wear away the inside. So what you wanna do is just be careful as you're wearing it away um, that you don't wear away too much and always do it from the inside of the body out because then you can really control it. So if you look at these holes back here at the very back, they're pretty small. So I just simply carefully ground away inside until it poked its hole through and uh, that was enough for that. You can do the exact same technique on the body. Um, it's pretty much the exact same way that I did the grill. So 
the grill that came with the 55 Chevy, you can see that I just simply ground the back off until I could see the ribs. So by holding it up to a light, I could see the ribs. And then once I could see the ribs, I went to hand sanding and that allowed me to open up the grill so you can see through it. Uh, I don't do that on a lot of models, but just a simple fact that you're going to be able to see the motor inside this particular model. That is why I did it with that one there. So you can see that. Um, it's the exact same technique that I used for the seats. So you can see that the seat is weathered and uh, worn through. Um, again, it was just a matter of using my saw attachment, uh, which is in this bucket here. And the saw attachment allowed me to cut through really simply. Um, so that's one technique that I use to do the undercarriage. The other technique is simply by using paint. So if I use uh, this paint right here, which is, let's see if I can get the focus up for you there. So it's Tester's Flat Rust, and this is enamel. So I, use, I usually work a lot with acrylics, but I do have a, a fair amount of enamels as well that I use. So what I'll do is I'll use this. I'll dab it on to something and I'll paint where I want it to be as the undertone paint. And then from there, I will use one of my rusting. So this one here is fine rust. And I will just simply dab that onto whatever I am, uh, whatever I'm doing. So in here is just a fine powder rust. And that is all homemade rust uh, that I use. So... Um, there's medium rust, coarse rust, uh, and then that's grass and stuff for when I do my dioramas and rocks and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so that is stuff that I use. I'll put the link down below to my video on how to make the rust and, uh, you guys can uh, feel free to make your own rust. Uh, the thing about rusting is that you want to get highlights in there. So you want to get low tones and, and uh, dark tones of uh, brown. Um, get some blacks in there. Use your washes. So if you go over, uh, Tammy has got some nice brown panel line and some black panel line, which will give you some nice, uh, nice contrasting colors. You just want to make it interesting. You don't want it to be just a brown and uh, all one color because that will not look very realistic at all. Um, as far as the exhaust pipes, you can see the exhaust pipes are aged and weathered looking and very rust colored, uh, as well as the headers, if I can get those, or manifolds, I guess I should say, they're not headers. So what that is, is kind of a mixture of my homemade rust and the, uh, this kit right here. So the C kit, which is Tamiya's weathering kit. Uh, it's really nice. It comes with a black, a silver, and a rust color, and it's almost like a uh, makeup package. Um, so it comes with a little applicator and a brush, and usually what I'll do is I will take my knife and just simply loosen this stuff up uh, so that it's more of a, a pasty powder, and then you can take that and apply it to whatever you want to apply it to. The key to using this stuff is that you want to put a nice flat clear coat over it after you're done just to protect what you've, uh, what you've achieved for the look. Uh, another thing you can do is um, you can just simply go in with your airbrush. Uh, once you've mastered airbrushing, um, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, airbrushing is not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination. You can actually go in and you can start airbrushing little details and little spots so that you uh, you get some high highlights and, and low lights inside the chassis just to, to give you a little bit more realistic. Um, the body itself is not going to have any holes rusted through it. So when I do a build, I kind of, in my mind, I envision what the build is that I'm doing. And this particular build, without giving away the entire diorama, which you guys will see here when I'm finished, uh, is just basically going to be a car that has uh, lived its life, um, cared for really well, and then uh, it just simply, it got to the point where uh, it, it became derelict. So, you know, whatever the case happened to be, the car ended up parked on the side of the road, and there she sat, brokenhearted. Okay. So let's go have a look and see how this baby's doing. So I believe it is dry. So now all you're going to do is take and knock the salt off of it. 
and as you're knocking the salt off of it, you will start to see all of your undertones coming through. This is difficult to do with one hand and I didn't bother setting up a tripod, so bear with me. Okay, so there you go. That's basically what you end up with. Now, if you wanted to have this entire center section, all of the undertone or the rust color, all you do is really wet this down good with a lot of water, put salt on it and just kind of pat it down with your finger and let it dry for a second so that the salt will stick there. Um, and then the air gun won't blow it off. I kind of like this effect a little bit more and then you, uh, you get, you know, it just looks like the, uh, the paint's been weathered and worn off it and sides are still nice and clean and shiny looking. So, you know, sun, sun weathered. Uh, that's basically what I did with the 55. You can see the, you can see where the salt was stuck on the sides and over the white on the back. And then I just went over the entire model. I went over the entire model with my airbrush and a light dusting of that uh, red brown with a black mixture in with it. Um, just to give it an overtone that the entire top was, uh, was sun faded. That's it guys. That's all there is to doing this. It's nothing at all. Just play around, have fun. You know, who cares what it turns out like the first two, three, four times, five times, whatever it takes you to master it, but uh, just have fun doing it and uh, keep building. Have fun. We'll see you in the next video.